powerful, impactful, life-changing. This is the teaching ministry of Apostle Faith Manoguera, where supernatural things are happening through the anointed Word of God. This prolific preacher and dynamic teacher of God's Word is changing lives all over the world. Are you ready? Because your life will never be the same. Your success is directly related to your submission to God's Word. We are not here to do what we think or feel. We are here to do what God's Word has approved. If you're going to succeed in life, God must come first in everything you do. Faith in God does not fail because its origin is God. Here is Apostle Faith Man Owen. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad. You're welcome to this live transforming broadcast. I believe that God's word will be coming to you today. All you need to do is to know the truth. And knowing the truth of God's word is the first step to true deliverance. You know, a lot of people are looking for deliverance, but their deliverance is in the word. In Psalm 107 verse 20, he sent forth his word and his word healed them and delivered them from their destruction. You see, God's word contains the energy of God. If you truly want to see transformation in any area of your life, you have to yield yourself to the word of God. Submission to God's word is the starting point of releasing your greatness. You see, there is greatness in you. God has invested so much ability in you, and this ability works by the knowledge of his will. I said, God has invested so much ability in you, and this ability works by the knowledge of his will. You know, Paul was right, and he said, that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will. The knowledge of the will of God is what determines the strength of your faith walk. The area where you understand the will of God is the area where your faith becomes effective, productive, and active. The area where you understand the will of God. So today we're looking at the word of God. The word of God is full of power. I'd like us to look at the scripture in in Hebrews chapter 12, thank you, Holy Spirit. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, Hebrews 4, verse 12, thank you, Holy Ghost. In Hebrews 4, verse 12, he said, For the word of God is quick. He said, For the word of God is quick and powerful. He said, The word of God is quick and powerful. You know, it's important we understand that we are carrying what is powerful. You see, whenever you're reading the Word of God, you are making contact with the nature of God, with the ability of God. You're connecting with God's ability. The Word of God is not ordinary. It's not just the ink on the page. That Jesus said the words I speak to you, their life and spirit is more than the ink on the page. The ink on the page is the Logos. But you see, it's not that Logos. We'll read that Logos to get to the Word of God. We'll read that Logos to get to the As you read through, you know, a lot of people may read this scripture now and say, for the Word of God is quick. And they say, what does that mean? The Word of God is quick. How quick it is. They may, they may make a fun of it. But if you receive revelation of that Word, it will change your attitude and your approach to situations. When we receive revelation, it helps us to walk in boldness. One of the ways we exercise our boldness is when we walk in revelation knowledge. Revelation knowledge is actually a manifestation, uh, a manifestation of the revealed truth of the word. The word of God being revealed to you, you know, when the truth is revealed, it empowers you to walk in light. I can truly walk in light except I have the revelation of his will. So he said here, for well, the word of God is quick. The word of God is quick. This is not ordinary. The word of God is powerful. He said, for well, the word of God is quick and powerful. 
It's powerful. So whenever you are speaking the word of God, you are releasing power into the atmosphere. The greatest treasure we have as believers in Christ Jesus is the word of God. The greatest treasure. And the more you have the revelation of the word, your degree of confidence will accelerate. Your degree of confidence will accelerate because by revelation, you know what to do. By revelation, we step into application. And that application will lead to transformation. So what happened here is that for the word of God is quick. The word. You see, the word will bring, into, will bring all things into life that are dead. In Ezekiel 37, we saw what happened in Ezekiel 37. The bones were dry. They were dry. They were helpless. And nothing was working. Nothing was working. And God said to Ezekiel, can these bones live? And Ezekiel said, thou knowest the Lord. Then Ezekiel decided to prophesy as God gave him an instruction. And prophecy is an inspired utterance. I said, prophecy is an inspired utterance. You know, prophecy is an inspired utterance. Prophecy is God's word speak, spoken for the purpose of edification, comfort, and exaltation. Now, when Ezekiel prophesied, there was a release of supernatural energy on those words that went forth. You see, the bones could hear, come on. You see, this is how your situation here. That was why Jesus said, if you can say to this mountain, what do we say to the mountain? It's not just our words. We speak the word of God to the mountain. The mountain of sickness and disease, the word of God said, he took our infirmity. If you can say to this mountain, whatever the situation may be in the natural, the word of God contains the liberating power of God. If you want to see God in action, speak his word. If you want to see God in action, speak his word. If you want God to show up, it is by his word. He doesn't show up any other way. He shows up by his word. This is why he said, he said for his word, his word healed them and delivered them from their destruction. He said his word will not return back to him void because it contains life. Jesus said the words I speak to you, their life and their spirit. So the word of God is powerful. So when you have this revelation and this understanding that God's word is powerful, then you're going to speak it with an expectation. Whenever you want to speak the word of God, you should know that you're about to release the, the most powerful weapon on the face of the earth. You're about to release a great energy into the situation. You're about to release the ability of God into the situation. Whenever you're speaking the word of God, you're releasing supernatural energy. You see, God's word is not ordinary. God's word contains life. God's word contains strength. If you want to see manifestation of the spirit, if you want to see release of power, then you have to speak the word of God. In Genesis, we saw something very important. In Genesis chapter 1, we saw how creation was, was a product of the spoken word of God. You see, most people don't know the energy that flows from the word of God because they are ignorant of the word. In Genesis chapter 1, I like to read verse, verse 2. two. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 he said and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters the spirit of God moved upon the face of the water the spirit of God moved now the darkness was there but the darkness could not stop the spirit this this is the saying it doesn't matter what you're going through it can't stop you from manifesting your dominion over the situation it doesn't matter what the situation is right now in your finances in your job in your relationship the word of god contains the liberating energy of god if you want to see the manifestation of god then you need to understand the potential of his word and then he said in genesis 1 verse 3 and god said now when god spoke there was so much power and the same power that went out with those words out of God's mouth is the same power that flows out of your mouth whenever you speak God's word. When you're speaking the word of God, you're speaking God. 
It is God you're releasing into the atmosphere. Now, watch what happened here. He said, and God said, let there be light. You see, those who have the revelation of the word of God cannot be subdued by situation. Those who have the revelation of the word of God cannot be limited by their experience. Those who have the revelation of God, of God's word, cannot be subdued by the things they go through. Those who have the revelation of God's will cannot be frustrated by any evil reports they hear. It doesn't matter what the reports may be in the natural, uh, physical, it doesn't matter what the report is. A man with the revelation knowledge of God's word will see possibilities. You know why? The word of God is supernatural. Why did I say supernatural? It has the potential to break limitation. It has the potential to drive out evil spirit. It has the ability to resist the manifestation of demonic conspiracy. It has authority to cast out demons. You know, so God's word, God's word is full of so much energy. It's full of so much power. That was why I said the entrance of the word gives light. You know, the word of God is a light in the dark places. If if I have God's word concerning any area of my life, I, I can't be confused. Confusion is as a result of lack of revelation. If you have the revelation knowledge of his will, you cannot be confused. You, you, you cannot say you're confused because by the knowledge of his will, you can enforce your inheritance. You can enforce your inheritance. You can say, oh, I take my healing. Because healing is your inheritance, you can take that healing back the word of God. You see, God's word is all you need in this season of your life. With the knowledge of that word, your thinking and perspective towards life and situations will change. This is why in Matthew chapter 8, when the centurion was talking to Jesus, he says, speak the word only and my servant will be healed. The centurion man understood the authority of words, the power in words. So he said to Jesus, my servant will be healed by the speaking of the word. The same thing to your business. Your business will be healed heal when you begin to speak this word of God over your business. I used to say to people God's word has the answer. The answer is in the word of God. Whatever report you have heard this week or last week or two weeks ago or one month ago, maybe you look at the report and you say to yourself what am I going to do about this report? What to do is in the word. What to do about the report is in the word of God. In Colossians 3.16, he said, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. He said, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. You know what happened when that word dwell in you richly? That becomes your source of inspiration. That becomes your source of wisdom. Understanding for interpreting the situation will be released to you. Understanding for interpreting a lot of people lack understanding when it comes to dealing with some situations. They look at the situation as a mountain. Oh, I can't handle this. Oh, I don't know what to do. Oh, I am confused. You know, they, they speak from their limitation, they speak from their inability, they speak from the negative experience they've had in the past instead of making God's word their focus for expression, for thinking and conversation. Listen to this. This situation you're watching right now is subject to change. You can't magnify the situation above God's word. You can't magnify the situation above the word of God. Because I have to make God's word my thinking. My, God doesn't want me to think from what I go through. He wants me to think from his will. His will is the word. God doesn't want me to look at the things I'm going through as a problem. He wants me to see it from the perspective of his will. God doesn't want me to be a person who is subdued by what I feel. He wants his word to determine the lead. God doesn't want me to look at my situation and say, well, I can't handle this. He wants me to exercise authority. God doesn't want me to look at the situation and say, well, I'm hopeless. I'm finished. No, I'm not finished. You know, for most people, the way they speak tells you they don't have the word of God in their hearts. If God's word is not in you, it will show in your conversation. If God's word is not in you, it will show in your conversation. It will show in your thinking. It will show in your action. It will show in how you respond to things because the word of God in your spirit is what determines your action. Can I say this to you? No matter how difficult it is right now, victory belongs to you if you can look at the situation from the perspective of God's word.
Whenever Jesus wants to heal people, most of the time he he, he, he teaches. You know, if you look at Luke chapter in Luke Gospel chapter five verse seventeen, in Luke five seventeen he said, as Jesus was teaching, he said the power of God was present to heal the sick. He said the power of God was present to heal the sick. The power of God was present to heal. He was teaching because the word of God comes with power. The word is the power. Hmm. The word is the power. If you talk about the power of God, it is the word of God. The word is the power. So a lot of people are saying, "Oh, I want to see. The, I want to see more of God's power. Oh, I want to see God, more of God's power." But they don't value the word of God. If you don't value the word of God, how do you manifest the power of God? You cannot manifest the power in isolation. You manifest the power by revelation. The power of God is already inside of us as we fellowship with the written word of God. Wisdom and understanding comes to us to know what to do at the right given time. This is why we we'll listen to the leadership of the Spirit of God. We we'll listen to the Holy Ghost for direction. You know, sometimes you're preaching or ministering, and then the Holy Ghost brings a word into your heart. Then the Holy Ghost tells you do this, the Holy Ghost tells you do that. He said, When you choose to walk in obedience, you'll be unlocking the treasures. Of the spirit, you know, that's why God honors obedience so much. He honors people that honors his word, he honors people who live by his word, he honors people who allow his word to determine their way of thinking. He honors them. Do you want to prosper? Make the word of God your priority. Do you want to excel in life? Make the word of God your priority. Do you want your dreams to come true? Make the word of God your priority. This is the way out of this situation, this financial situation, this relationship situation. You look at yourself right now, you say to yourself, what can I do about this situation? What can I do about this case? What can I do? What can I do? But you got to look at the word of God. What God is what to do. The word of God is what you got to do. I mean, doer of the word should be your kind of thinking, that kind of mentality. I am a doer of the word. I am a doer of the word. I am a doer in difficult time, in tough time, when it look like nothing is working out, when it look like nobody cares for you. You stay in the word of God. You stay. That is your source. That is your source of strength. In Romans 10, 17, he says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing. So if I consistently pay attention to God's word, that is the key to changing things around me. If I consistently pay attention to God's word, that is a proof that I'm going to function supernaturally over the situation or the circumstances. This is why Jesus walked in so much power. Because Jesus was a man walking on the earth, you know. He never walked on the earth as God. That was why he said he was tempted like we are tempted. You know, God cannot be tempted. We are tempted like he, he was tempted the way we are being tempted. But he did not fall into any of the temptation. That simply means he came to show us how to do it. Jesus came to show us how to do it. He came to show us how to cast out devils. He came to show us how to raise the dead. He came to show us how to walk supernaturally. He came to show us how to walk in power. And how did he do it? How did he do it? He did it by the word. It was by the word that he did it. He was teaching the word. He was teaching the word. And as he was teaching the word, the power was in the atmosphere. As he was teaching the word, he was laying hands on the sick. As he was teaching the word, things were happening. Jesus brought the word of God to us. And let me say this to you. If you read the Gospels, I used to say that we will read about the healings of Jesus, read about the miracles of Jesus, because Hebrews 13 verse 8 said Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That simply means what he did more than 2,000 years ago is willing to repeat this morning. Jesus can raise the dead right now. He can heal the sick. He can deliver. He can cast out devils right now. And how do we do it today? We do it in the name of Jesus. He said, in my name, cast out devils. That was what Jesus said. In my name, cast out 
devil. The name of Jesus is an inheritance of the church, of the believer in Christ Jesus. The name of Jesus is full of power. He said in Hebrews chapter 2, if you read Hebrews chapter 2, uh, no sorry, Philippians chapter 2, if you read Philippians chapter 2, you, you read the part from verse 9 to 10 where it said, he, he have highly exalted his name above every other name at the mention of the name of Jesus. So, so the name of Jesus is the currency of the believer, the spiritual currency. Whatever we want to purchase, we can take it in his name. Come on. In the name of Jesus, we'll take our healing. In the name of Jesus, we'll see miracles. In the name of Jesus, we'll see signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus, we'll rebuke evil spirits and we'll cast out devils. In his name, we lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Jesus is still healing today. The days of miracles did not end with the apostles. The days of miracles continue because Jesus is still here today is here by his word is here by his name is here by his spirit today jesus is here in hebrews in hebrews chapter 4 verse 2 hebrews 4 verse 2 i think i like us to look at that scripture thank you holy spirit thank you father in hebrews chapter thank you father thank you father thank you holy ghost in hebrews chapter 4 verse 2 i like you to look at that scripture in Hebrews 4 verse 2 it said, For unto us was the gospel preached preach as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. The word preached did not profit them. The word preached did not profit them. Why? Because it was not mixed with faith. It is the word preached that brings faith. And how do we experience that faith? Is when we take in that word. When we take in the word of God, faith begins to rise in our hearts. Faith begins to rise in our heart. As faith rises in our heart, we begin to move into greater height. This is how we move into greater height. As faith rises in our heart. Can I say this to you? Your dreams are possible. Your visions are possible. The things God has called you to do is possible. If you focus on the word of God, if you think from God's word, if you allow the word of God to determine your conversation in every situation, it is an indication that you cannot be subdued by the things you go through. Because God's word contains the liberating ability of God. The, the, the liberating ability of God is in the word of God. The liberating ability of God is in his word. All you're looking for to change your life is within the neighborhood of God's word. That was why the scripture said you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. So freedom comes by the word. In John Gospel, let me take a look at this, John Gospel chapter 8. And let's hear this, let's, 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 let's read this. In John Gospel chapter 8, thank you Holy Spirit. Wow, I just remembered something. But I'm going to go into that. Let's go to John Gospel chapter 8. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In, in John Gospel chapter 8, and look at what I read here. Let's do verse 13. As he spake these words, many believed on him. As he spake, many believed on him. Then, then said Jesus to those Jews which believe on him, If ye continue in my word, this is so powerful. He said, If ye continue in my word, this is how to be stable spiritually. This is how to be held spiritually. And this is how to be a powerful man or woman of the spirit. It's in continuity. You see, if people don't continue in the word of God, they, they, you, you can't see the power flow. Continuity in the word is, is, is what brings the life, is what brings the power manifestation. He said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed continue in the word, in the good times, in the bad times. It doesn't matter what the time is, but you choose to continue. You continue by reading it. You continue by meditating on it. You continue by believing it. You continue by applying it. You continue by declaring it. This is how you continue in the word. You continue by applying it. How do you continue in the word? You continue by reading. By reading the word, Second Timothy 2.15. That's how you continue, by reading the word. You continue by listening. 
John 15 verse 3. Ye are cleansed by the word which I have spoken to you. So you continue by listening to the word. You continue by believing the word. Romans chapter 4 verse 3. You know, and Abraham believed God. It was counted for him for righteousness. He believed God. This is how you continue in the word. By believing the word. Number four. You, you continue in the word. By speaking the word. Jesus said in Mark 11. If you read verse 22 to 23. If you can say to this mountain. Be that removed. This is how we continue. By speaking the word of God. Second Corinthians 4.13. 2 Corinthians 4 13, we therefore having the same spirit of faith, therefore we believe, therefore have we spoken. So the spirit of faith has expression, the spirit of faith has expression. So that's how we continue in the world. We continue in the world by doing it, by doing it. James chapter 1, in James chapter 1, it said, The doers of the world is blessed. Who is the doer? He said, The doers of the world is blessed. That, that is how you continue by doing the word. This is how you continue in the word. You continue by doing because what that doing is a proof that you don't believe. So the doers of the word are those who prosper in the word. I want to look at James chapter 1. Let's look at verse 22. In James chapter 1, verse 22, he said, But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. Be ye doers of the word. Be ye doers of the word. A man who is committed to doing the word will prosper, will excel, will become all that God wants him to be. So be ye doers of the word. This is how you win. This is how you reign in life. You reign by doing. You, you continue in the word when you choose to trust God. That's how you continue in the word. When you choose to trust, but say, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. You, you, you trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. This is how you continue in trusting God in his word. By trusting that I want to show you this scripture. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 3. In Proverbs chapter 3, thank you, Holy Spirit, verse 5. In Proverbs 3, verse 5, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, it said, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. I believe that this message will change you. Share it with your friends. Share it with your loved ones. Tell everybody about the word of God. In Psalm 107, verse 20, he said, He sent forth his word and his word healed them and delivered them from their destruction. The word healed them and delivered them from their destruction. I like us to look at John Gospel chapter 1, verse 1. In John Gospel 1, verse 1, it said, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God in the beginning. So you can see that God never did anything except by his word. Everything was done by his word. And the same thing God wants it to do today. If you're watching this broadcast today, and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can say this after me. Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth. I believe in my heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Amen. If you pray the prayer with us, it means you're born again. And the Spirit of God is going to lead you from this day forward. You will not remain the same. You're not going to remain the same. I want to encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Is Faith Man Teaching on YouTube? Is Faith Man Teaching on YouTube? And also keep watching FinishWalkTV.com. FinishWalkTV.com is 24 7. FinishWalkTV.com is 24 7. Every day bringing God's word to people around the world. People are watching us from China. They are, they are watching us from Ghana. They are watching us from Nigeria. They are watching us from Canada. They are watching us from Netherlands. They are watching us from Russia. They are watching us from different parts. I can't mention all the countries right now. But when I see the list of people viewing the broadcast from around the world, I know God's word is helping people. Hallelujah. So also I want to encourage you. Keep watching Finish Work TV. That's come. And also, I want to encourage you to consider partnering with this ministry today. Your partnership is helping people to receive the word of God around the world. You can partner with us today on PayPal. It's faithmanteaching at gmail.com. It's faithmanteaching at gmail.com. 
the spirit man teaching so i wanted to, I wanted to encourage you uh, to, to, to sow your seed and just trust god and believe god for great things and you, 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 your seed will go a long way to be a blessing to people let's support the gospel let's support the teachings let's go ahead and reach out to more and more people this message has been blessing you think about how to partner and support it to keep reaching more and more people this is how we'll continue to bring you this message because people partner with it people support it and that is why you're hearing this message today so we want to encourage you to partner with us you can do that on paypal is faith and teaching at gmail.com whatever gift you give will be helping more people to receive God's word. Thank you for watching this broadcast. You can comment with me on my official page. It's Apostle Faith Man of Weather on my official page. When you connect, you will all remain the same. We love you until my next broadcast. Don't ever forget this. There is goodness in you.